Hey, how's it going? This is Roy from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along. This is another tech review video. Woo, exciting. This is a 3D printer sent to me by box.co.uk. A link to the website can be found in the description below where you can find out what they sell. Uh, and it is a big range of all sorts of everything wonderfully connected with technologies. But I'm here today to have a look at this Steady Tech Mini. So I'm going to let you know what I think about this. But first of all, I need to get it out of this big old box that it's in. Rawr. Sorry for the noise on the microphone. This is definitely going to be the case that I need to slide it out rather than try and lift it out. Okay, so we have our printer. Comes with some pretty robust padding. It's all quite exposed out the middle there. Uh, look, we've got this bag here. Let's uh, pop this off. Ah, it's come with this spare print bed cover. That's pretty cool, yeah. And it's come with a little bit of filament, which I guess is just to get started in testing with. Let's get it out of the foam. Okay. So inside this foam we've got a little box, so there's probably some useful bits in there. And, whoa, wanna be careful. I was lifting it by a stepper motor there. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's the box unloaded. Now we can see we've got the printer here. It looks, it, it's pretty robust. It's got some weight behind it. It feels pretty heavy. Um, I mean, you know, it's not super heavy, but it's, it feels like decently weighty. Got a big cable tie here to stop it moving around, so I'll need to get rid of that. Comes with a little bit of filament. This, which looks like a replacement bed cover. And this little box, which has lots of more little pieces. So USB cable, SD card, power supply, lead, a spatula. To be fair, that's actually really cool that that comes with that because when I bought my first 3D printer, I had to go out and buy one of these. So the fact that that comes with this on such a good value printer is really impressive. That must be a spool holder, a couple of cable ties, something for pulling small things off the stage, some print stick or non-branded print stick equivalents. That, that looks like a hypodermic -y, needle -y type thing for uh, clearing clogs. And then this is a gauge, ah look, a gauge. Ah, this is a gauge for setting your nozzle. So let's start off by getting rid of these cable ties. Now that is a big beast. Whoa, okay. Okay, what we've got then. So, this is nice. It's nice how compact this actually is. I'll just give you, so you can see the whole thing. Spin around the back there. Around the back we've got this little power supply area plus a switch. It's only got a small bed on it, but it's only a small printer. That's, that's kind of the point. Let's tidy up a little bit here. Now, interestingly, there is no manual included. So, I guess I need to go and get a PDF, or perhaps it's on the SD card. Sure enough, the manual is on the SD card. I've just discovered this here, so this is really useful. I quite like the idea. I don't, I don't mind having a physical manual. I kind of miss it a little bit though. It's quite nice if you're doing something like this to just be able to flick through the pages, but at the same time, this is fine. Okay, so it's supposed to be a kind of pretty much plug and play setup out of the box. There shouldn't be a lot to do. There is this bit. I just need to attach this to the side here. First, I need to just take this plastic nut off. What do I do? Slide that in there. And then turn this. Okay, the next is power. So I shall pop power into the back, turn it on. We hear a little fan, we have a screen. What have we got? It says printer ready. It's quite a loud little fan in there. But we've got a little control knob. That controls the speed. Nice, okay. And it clicks. So we have a little display here with the rolly wheel that we can press as a click so we can look at the SD card, level the bed, go into quick settings. In here, change filament, disable steppers, preheat, cool down. So all the kind of typical stuff 
under advanced temperature factory reset okay so yeah we've got some uh, useful functionality in there uh, yeah, it looks pretty good and I've just spotted there is where you insert your SD card so it comes with this SD card, uh, it's just a little um, little micro SD card and it has on board it has the manual, uh, Cura and a couple of G codes. But I'm going to start off by uh, inserting some filament. Okay, so we need to put some filament inside. So here I have two Steadytech filaments. I have a green and an orange. So for now let's just go with uh, the green. The plan is that I will do an interesting project with this just using this printer. But just for now, I just want to get it working, give it a test, see how it works. Like I say, I have the Steadytech filament. This is green. Steadytech, obviously, it's the same make as the printer, available from box.co.uk, as I mentioned before. Details in the description. Okay. So, pop the reel on. I'm just gonna remove some of this because it's a bit a bit rigid where it's in at the edge. So I'm just gonna pop that in there just for the moment. Right, I believe I need to come into here, quick settings and change filament. And now I need to choose uh, add filament. Preheating extruder, okay. Okay, so we can see that this is heating up. I just need to give it a minute. Okay, so that's now preheated. Okay, you can see here, we have to push the filament through here. Okay, push that through. I believe you push it right through until it reaches the hot end. There we go, that's now in. And now we can see the filament is starting to come through the nozzle. Okay, let's get rid of that. So we have our filament loaded. Next we will level the bed. So let's have a look if we go into menu and do level bed. Let's see how this works. The level wizard will guide you through leveling the bed next. Turn the thumb wheel until paper can be slid between the bed and the extruder. So our piece of paper should slide just in, but if we adjust that at all, okay, that holds the paper. There we go, right, cool. Fit under there, so we need to. Okay. Oh. One thing that is a little annoying is that when you click this, sometimes you accidentally roll it and click it at the same time which means you sometimes you go back when you're meant to go forward. Okay, I'm happy that's now level. By the way, I'm working through the manual in the steps, so I'm doing everything in the order in which the manual suggests. <laughs> right, next I need to slice a model uh, to test the Steadytech mini printer. As I say, the SD card comes with Cura on it. I actually, because I already use uh, the Prusa slicer, I'm just gonna use this just because I'm what I, it's what I'm used to. You could use whatever slicer you want. That's a whole nother element. I'm just gonna slice this. Uh, this is an RMF coin that I created. It's what I use to sort of test. So it's kind of perfect for this. And I'm just going to do a slice and a print of this and see how this comes out on the printer. Now inside of my Prusa slicer, I've already configured a Steadytech mini profile with all the details out of the manual so uh, this is kind of ready to go um, I'm gonna do it on the normal which is 0.02 and 
this apparently is going to take 45 minutes. Now, out of curiosity, if I did it on three, how much quicker would it be? 32 minutes. So, for the for the extra few minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, I'm just gonna go with normal. So let's slice that, um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and export this code, and I'll see you back at the printer. Right, there we go, we've sliced our model. Now this is definitely the same day. This is undisputably proven because of the fact that I'm wearing the same shirt. Now that we've sliced our model, we can go ahead and get this printed on this. So yes, our sliced model is now sitting on this. Our sliced model is now on this SD card. So we'll pop this into this, the machine. It goes in just here. Boom. Uh, we better switch it on. And we want to preheat, so we'll just go into basic settings and choose preheat. Now it will start warming up. So I'm just going to put a little uh, bit of glue on our bed. So just to help that first layer. Lovely stuff. Looks like we're now preheated because we've got some stuff coming out. Now let's go into uh, print file. And we'll choose the RMF coin. Okay, that has now started. It's doing its thing. It's printing. I guess we'll come and check back on it in um, around about 45 minutes and see how it's getting on. It's actually really satisfying still watching these things move around though, I tell you. It's worth getting into this art just for the fact of watching the movements. How it's all so precise. It's just amazing. Boom! And that is printed. Now, I'll have to come clean. I did two, because the first one didn't actually turn out so well. The first one actually, uh, you can see here, it kind of curled a little bit. Um, and overall, the print quality wasn't great. And what I discovered was it was my bed leveling. I did the bed leveling again. I managed to fine tune it a bit. And I then set it going again. And that's this one. And we can see that this one is a lot better. There's no warping on it or anything like that. The first layer is actually fairly good. Actually, it's really good. It, it's got a few little uh, defects that, yeah, in all fairness, I would want to tweak the settings to try and lose, and I'm pretty confident that you could. Obviously, I just created the settings and set a print going, so now is when you when you would tweak it. So overall, that's actually quite impressive for a first print, or first or second, whatever, uh, out of the printer from out of the box. That's, yeah, it's good, it's good. Now that I've done setting it all up and going through and printing something with it, let's have a look at five things I dislike about this printer. With all the fans and everything in here, it's quite a noisy little printer. It's not too bad, but you honestly, you wouldn't want to try and sleep with it running in the room with you. The bed leveling is a little bit fiddly. When you've got it into the rear position and you're trying to adjust these twisty knobs, it's a little bit tricky if you've got bigger fingers. This knob is a bit annoying. I constantly press it and turn it a little at the same time, meaning that I often press back, which, for example, when you're doing the bed leveling, means that you'll have to restart again. The Z movement is pretty slow. You just sometimes feel like you're waiting a really long time for it. The bed size is a little misleading. You've got all this area on the back that it doesn't use. It actually only uses this section here. But don't panic, it's not all bad. Here's five things I really like about this printer. It comes pre-built, so you can pretty much get it out of the box and start printing. The only thing you have to do is attach this filament spool holder, and that's it. You're then ready to go. This loading mechanism is really easy to use. You just push the lever down and push your filament through until it reaches the hot end and it's job done. While it does have a fixed bed that you have to use glue on, you can get removable covers for it that you just peel off and stick back on. 
So this is really handy on this style of printer. It comes with some really handy bits from this hypodermic needle, to this spatula, to this thing for whatever it's for, and even a bit of glue. To actually come with, that's really cool. It's really compact. So it's nice and small, it has a small footprint, it doesn't need a lot of space. You can slide it into the corner of your desk and it'll be just out of the way. Great! Right, so that's it for this one. That is a unboxing and a trial and I have to admit, this is a really nice little printer for the money. I would say is about on par with my Flashforge Finder, which was a lot more money. Honestly, I think it's really good. The thing you do have to remember is with 3D printing, there is still no guaranteed out of the box, it will always be perfect solution. There is always an element of trying and fine tuning and stuff like that still. And you definitely, you have to do some fine tuning with this. As I can see with my first print, it's definitely close, but I still need to tune it a little bit. But in all honesty, that's part of the fun. I would definitely say if you're looking to start in printing or you just want a machine to just sit and churn out small items then go for this thing it is great so it's all great and all of that but now I must give it a bit of a challenge so I am now working on a small project that I will put together using only this and that will be my next video so if you don't want to miss that please do subscribe click the bell so you get notified so again a massive thanks to box.co.uk for sending me this for a review I'm really pleased you did because I'm really glad I got to see something uh, a little bit different to what I've gotten used to that reminds me a little bit of where I started and I like that a lot so anyway I have waffled enough for the ending here and I hope to see you in the next one cheers bye